So you never guess what's just happened. S Plus has been updated because the Genesis 2 dev kit released. And now we've got the S Plus variants of some of the Genesis 2 items. These are insane. Let me read you some of the change logs before we get into this. Uh, and then we'll have a look at all these new items that we can see just right here. Oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be a good one. There's quite a few changes, and I think you'll enjoy them. Before we get into this, though, make sure to like button, subscribe to be new being, and if you want to see any more updates or notes or changes or whatever, uh, leave a comment down below, and we'll get into that. First of all, let's talk about some fixes that have happened. Uh, the fix the issue of boss tributes not being consistent with the S-Plus transmitter. Fix the issues of not being able to transfer into ammo boxes. Fix the issues with the S-Plus turrets not being reloaded by the ammo boxes. Players that are passengering on a dyno will be now dismounted when teleported. Fix the issue of S plus glass dynamic gates losing their opacity settings when coming out of stasis, which is when you log off the server and come back or log off single player. Fix the issue of the S plus gotcha platform where producing through the ceiling below it, which is fine. I guess as if you had it on top floor stuff would be falling through. Fix the issue with dino storage soul traps now producing resources in the S plus vivariums. Creatures converted via the S plus transmutator now have their mating timer and mutagen flag set correctly. Fix issues with the S plus cryo fridge not being paintable. And that's pretty much the fixes. Now let's get into some of the new stuff. First of all, let's have a look at this. We have the S plus egg incubator. Now this adds quite a few things which I am um, I'm mega excited for this because I was hoping the S plus would bring out one of these because of course with S plus you can change anything in the any settings which means that you're most likely going to be able to add a lot more egg capacity to this device not sure how it's going to work but we'll uh, we'll find out let's grab some of these uh, wonderful dodo eggs that have been laid for us so we've chucked a few eggs in there what is going to happen with these eggs well basically the egg incubator could snap to any foundations first of all so it's it will snap to a foundation, which is great. You don't have to just randomly place it and hope for the best. It will try to set the perfect temp for most number of eggs first. And then when those ones are done, it will change to the next most common. So if you have like 10 different eggs, uh, 10 different species of eggs, the first in slot one, it will do the temperature for that one. And then it will work its way through and change the temperature to the optimal temperature automatically as you go through. If you had 10, sorry, if you had nine dodo eggs of one snow owl, it's going to set the temperature for the dodos because there's more eggs. Okay, so it's going to automatically set the temperature for the most common egg in the egg incubator. It could also auto hatch eggs. Did you know that? I bet you didn't. It can auto hatch eggs. So you don't have to worry about coming back and chucking eggs out, which is pretty cool. In the configs, though, you can change the incubator uh, tribe limit. So you can set a limit for tribes on how much they can use the egg incubator, as well as incubating the perfect temp bonus. So you can, you can sort of change all that in the config. As you can see, these are going down relatively fast. And we just want to see, really, if it's going to hatch these. If you hold down E or your action button, you can see that you can not auto-hatch in eggs. Uh, you click that, and now it's auto-hatching eggs. I think that is, or is that saying? Yeah, auto-hatching eggs. So it's, it's now going auto-hatch eggs. You can manually control temp or automatically control temp. So we've set it automatically, and now these are spot on. As you can see, before they were not. So, uh, yeah, there's the settings in there. You've got to hold down in. And if you want to do it yourself, you can do it yourself the old-fashioned way. But these two is how you're going to turn it on automatically. We're just going to wait until it pops out and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Are they about to hatch out by themselves? They're super close, 99%. There we go. They've just been chucked out of there like, get out of here. And obviously, you do have to claim these. Uh, let's just uh, claim these little babies. And we've got ourselves some little dodo babies. Hell yeah. You know, you know you love that dodo baby life. That is the S Plus Egg Incubator, a really welcomed addition to the S Plus variety. Next is the S Plus Mannequin, this is the Loadout Mannequin. So you might be thinking, what can S Plus really do to improve the Loadout Mannequin? Well, basically, it snaps to foundations, walls, and ceilings, as you can see. Uh, this is snapped there pretty well. We snapped another one there, so it's facing the other way. And also, it acts as a fridge, so you could chuck, like, healing brews in here or whatever, and they will stay refrigerated, uh, for example. We have uh, seven days spoil time on this egg. We're going to chuck it into there. And now we've got 799 days spoil time. So as long as you're powered, i.e. with a tech generator, these loadout mannequins will act as a refrigerator for any items that have a spoil timer, which is pretty cool. Next up is the tech crop pot. Look at this. This tech crop pot. Uh, basically, what do, you, what do you need from this? Obviously, you can change settings. So you, uh, in the settings, you can make the crops grow a lot faster in here or a lot more, you can change slot counts. The main thing of the tech crop plot is again, it snaps the foundation on that, but it doesn't require irrigation. So these are completely non-irrigation. As you can see, we've got water in there. Um, some might say that's from the rain, but no, there's water in there. You don't need irrigation. As long as they're powered, that's all they need. And that is the tech crop plot 
from S plus. Okay, so we've got the ammo box up next. Look at this guy. Ammo box. Pretty cool. Uh, you just chuck ammo in here as normal. We don't really have any ammo on us right now. And it's practically exactly the same. But you can change some configs over in the any file. And one of the configs that you can change is ammo box slot count and turret ammo box range in foundation. In foundation. So you can have this in the middle of your base and you can set the range of foundations on your any settings to be 100 foundations uh, like latitude and longitude that meaning that you could pretty much cover your whole base with one of these boxes and you could increase the capacity of this box you just chuck everything in here you have a ton of capacity it will do all the turrets around your base and you're sorted SOS our box is pretty much what we was looking for if i'm going to be honest the next new item added to this list is the strider interface now this can be linked to your strider and will upload its inventory into s plus dedicated storage map wide and can be placed on the saddle platforms which is pretty cool so basically uh you could just set a resource you can have one across the map you can just put yourself in there as you can see resource there and then you can pretty much call it in okay so this is, we're gonna do this to show off this item a little bit there's actually two things that we can show here so we've got the strider interface down there but we've also got in my inventory the s plus strider saddle platform oh okay so we chuck that down on there and as you can see, you've now just made a bigger platform, which means you can build more. And uh, the S Plus love doing stuff like this. You always get one on a Quetzal and all that. Obviously, if you cryopod it, you lose the platform, so don't do that. But it looks pretty neat. I mean, it just fits around. It's quite nice. I like that. And of course, you could put on these little uh, resource boxes like that, which is the Strider interface, which looks pretty cool. This next one is a huge item that's being added and it's the s plus propagator which is uh, this little thing right here it looks like a small version of the cloning tool uh but this is going to be the most op item added to arc in s plus ever so this can breed creatures with cryopods and soul traps can apply modifications to genders abilities to breed and mutations like the mutator your use is increased based on how many modifications are applied to the creatures which i'll show you in a sec and this could be changed in the config all creatures bred in the propagator will produce eggs that show their stat slash colors of the babies as well of as which parents they inherited it from or if it is if it was a mutation so i mean so that's a lot of information so basically i'll chuck a screenshot up and we'll have a look at this in a second uh, you can see that it tells you where the mutation came from, tells you the colors and where we got the the stats from. This will be huge for like, you know, people that want to do a lot of breeding. This is a huge thing, especially because you can do it from cryopods as well, which is really OP. The propaganda eggs have a special context where you can right click on the menu and you can either destroy the egg or send it to the nearest incubator, which will be the S plus incubator, as you can see. So it works together and it will start the cycle. The propagator can also be set up to automatically drop eggs for collection by the hatcheries and aggregators that's insane that is insane that is so op so basically you can fully automate the breeding just like the s plus where the s plus you know s plus hatchery can normally pick up eggs but this will literally breed eggs out of cryopods and put it in your egg incubator for it to then be hatched which is insane now there are some configs for this and we will i will show you how this works in a second but there's some configs for this uh you want you can change the, the slot count in the propagator you can change the mating interval in the propagator the fuel class, the pulse multiplier mutation, the pulse multiplier for breeding, the pulse multiplier for gender, propagator base fuel intervals, propagator disable dino mods, propagator dino blacklist, and you can see some documentation for that. So let's have, let's have a look at this because this is a really interesting one. As you can see, it is currently online. Breed dinos from cryopods. All creatures will, will produce eggs. Cryopods will not lose charge. Must contain adults. Agendas cannot be changed with the with a mating cooldown. Okay, we're pretty cool. And then uh, you got holding eggs, dropping eggs, so you can decide what's going to happen with it. So how am I going to test this? We're going to breed some more dodos that haven't you know been mated already. Okay, so we've got a female and a male dodo. We're going to chuck these into here, as you can see. We'll do that, and then we can prepare these dinos for breeding, which we will do. Let's have a look at the any additional settings. You can hold eggs, so you can change settings from here. But it's really simple. We're just going to go prepare dinos for breeding. It obviously costs elements to start breeding. So we're going to click start breeding. You can see you're, you're male and female. You can change the genders from this menu. For example, now if we go that to male, uh, it's going to say we've got two males. And it will consume one element every 22 hours. Yeah, we don't do that. So put that back to females. So you can change that there and then. You can add a mute pulse. Uh, I guess this is how many mutation pulses they'll do. So if we do 10, can we do 10? 
Okay, it's a maximum of one or two mutation pulses. So if we go two, so it's going to throw a mutation pulse whenever they breathe these, which is insane. Okay, and it will cost one element every 21 hours, 39 minutes, 36 seconds. That's insane. Okay, let's start breeding. Obviously, I think the quicker that you'll do that, the quicker it will go. And as you can see, they are now breeding. Now, you obviously need one of these per one. So if you breed it more than dodos, for example, if you want to breed dodos and aloes, you're going to have to, you know, have a few. But you can chuck more in here. I'm assuming of the same nature or the same breed, you could chuck more in there because there was a lot of slots. So this is a female dodo. And this one's a female dodo. So if you chuck both of these in, these two should also start breeding, I believe. Or we might have to stop it to then chuck it in. But there's one mate at the moment. Let's chuck these two in. It's cancelled it, as you can see. I mean, we're testing for the first time. And then you can prepare dinos to breed again. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. So we're going to start the breeding process. As you can see, we've got a new little thing. We've got a male there and four, uh, three females. You can choose how many mutation pulses per female. That's going to be six. So uh, six mutation pulses, one element every 17 hours. Okay, cool. Let's uh, start breeding. So there's three mating. And again, we can change this to either hold eggs or as you can see now, it's going to drop eggs. And you can also change that there. So it's dropping eggs at the moment. So you can see breeding progress by clicking here. You can stop breeding or view breeding process. A minute and a half. So we'll come back to that in a moment once it's gone through that. And now uh, we've got them three dodos breeding. That's actually a really cool item. Automatic breeding. That's insane. Which means you can do um, mammals now. So you could do like mammals that gestrate, which is really crazy. So before we carry on with anything else and we're waiting for that, let's have a look at some new things. The Omni Tool has changed. There's some changes to the Omni Tool. They've got an RTS mode now. Which, so the RTS mode actually allows you to control your donors pretty much like the exosuit all from the Omni Tool. The issue is, I don't know if I'd be an idiot, but I don't know how to exit it. And the controls don't look like they tell you how to exit. Just tells you how to hide the menu. So you could do that. Uh, you've got stuff like the structures. You can see structure stats there. You can see that this is probably finished now. There's three mating. You can select individual dodos and move them. So creatures you can individually move. It's basically the exosuit thing, but in the Omni tool. Okay, carry it on from that. We have a scanner. In the scanner mode, we have a new thing. So the scanner, you didn't know, you could scan creatures. Obviously, you need two transmitters for that. There we go. We got three transmitters now. Look at that. So normally you can scan for creatures with this mode. So as you can see, the three eggs from here have now dropped. Just pushed out the front here. And if you look at them, as this was the thing that was talking about, the eggs, you can see all these stats. But the Omni tool now, this scanner, if you hold down shift and right click while pointing at an egg, it will tell you the stats of that egg and the colors. So it's basically like a spyglass for eggs. If this was just a normal egg that your creature laid, you could instantly see if it is one of the eggs that you need. And that's on the scanner feature now, underneath RTS mode. I have glitched out my suit. I'm not pressing shift. This is uh, just a constant for me. Nice. That's how we glitch out our. The Omni Tool clone has been removed as well, but you can still use clone. If you go to here, right click it, as you can see, clone this. So you can still use the clone feature, you just need to clone it from the instead now. The mutator now has a new option to set a imprint pulse. So if you go to here, we can change these. Sets the imprint of nearby creatures to the player who activated the pulse. So you can change whoever imprinted them. It increases the imprint quality by 20%. There we go. And it only works on adults. So if you ran that right now, it would imprint these guys and they would all uh, get a 20% imprint buff. And we'll change the name to be imprinted if someone else in the tribe claimed them. So I don't think this is new, but I don't know how long it's been here. This is the S plus transmutator and you can set it to I don't know this is conversion mode normal then you've got aberrant tech extreme radical so it changes to aberrant we're going to convert the dodo as you can see there's like I don't know 15 dinos there one of these have converted to an aberrant can you tell which one no neither can I which one of these is aberrant that just shows how much the skins really change because I can't really tell which one's aberrant anyway that's pretty much all the new stuff on the S plus with the gen 2 it is very cool. Oh, even the transmitters have changed. Oh, wow. They've got like this little tech little pulse there now. And they look slightly different. So there's been a few free skins as well. I think some of the prop uh, helpers and all that, they've changed, which is pretty cool. And also you can get our plants from the prop gatherers and all that. So that's great. The gardeners. Anyways, that is the S plus video. This is a video that's been added super long. I apologize for that. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to like button, subscribe to the community, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day. Bye. -bye.